Just talking before, we're talking in the break about your, your, your music stuff that you've been doing as well. Yeah. The, uh, now, what, you play the accordion, right? That's what you told me. I right? know, I've, learned, I've been learning the accordion. It's not part of the rig. I sort of, I sort of built, like, I wanted to just be able to do like a one-woman thing where it's like a traveling circus kind of meets performance art, meets like 1940s musical review, you know? God, I love and, you. <laughs> so, I, you know those old steamer trunks like in Joe vs. the Volcano where they have, they're really tall and one side is all of like a, a built-in wardrobe and then one is drawer? Yes, yes, like in Marx Brothers movies yeah, or really something. Tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, basically yeah, yeah. goes up to like, like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so I <laughs> and so I have like a like a guitar and an amp and a mixer and a mic and a drum machine and I, I work on a little micro corg and and it's just it's really it sounds like a traveling musical cubicle. <laughs> sort of crazy cubicle work environment. So what you're saying styrofoam. is that it's like what you said but without the bit I said. <laughs> well it's like if c cubicles probably when like in the 1940s they were built out of wood. And yes they, exactly. And they had like yes. strange sawdust on the floor and does, it wasn't. Does that help the music that they're made out of wood bar? Well sometimes it helps move it around. Love. You're quite small. This must be quite heavy. I have to have a dolly. I have a dolly that wheels it around. And by dolly, I mean... I know exactly what you mean. It's my job to be lame, though. I have to do... No, but sometimes I have to go and, like, pick, you know, like, have some guys help me, you know, like, set ah. up the show. Yes. How many of these guys help you? <laughs> Just, like, one or two, you know? Sometimes, right. like, my friends' gardeners have helped us a few times. Your friends' so. gardeners? Yeah. What delightful. I know. It was really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, this film again, because we were kind of trashing it a little bit, but it's quite a scary, scary, real, like, cronenberg -y horror yeah, film, right? Yeah, I feel like, I mean, as much as you can... I mean, the, the way... Anytime there's a horror movie, I mean, you always think, like, half-naked half women, you know, sweaty and sort of, like, you know, chainsaws. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. But for me, what I love about horror is... Is like what Lynch does for horror and like what Cronenberg does for horror, like the brood, you know, it's all like, there's no real bad evil person. It's basically like human nature, you know, right, yeah, yeah. and it's like the dark side of us all that sort of comes out in oppressive environments that brings it out, you know. Much like CBS, for example. <laughs> Conditioned in here, it's pretty nice. Yeah, that, that, that's just a draft. <laughs> There's no air conditioner in here. It's just open plan. There's like monkeys with yeah, fans. Yeah. So a fans. Lot of the fans. You, no, you can't do that with monkeys anymore. <laughs> really? Yeah, it used to be how we killed the studio. They it monkeys already? with fans, yeah. Now oh. the monkey lobby went nuts. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I know that is so lame. Do you go and see? Do you go and see horror movies to go and do that? I do, I do. I sometimes like to take my little sister, even though she's what? not really allowed to see. What age is she? She's ten. Oh my. And, and sometimes, I mean, even like when I took her to like Lord of the Rings, she was like, you know. You took a ten-year-old child to Lord of the Rings? This is inappropriate Yes. For me. She, she was telling me, she's like, that, that was, I'm going to get nightmares because of that. But then I go and like treat her to ice cream after, and I feel like we bond somehow. It's... <laughs> You're ever so slightly evil, aren't you? <laughs> well, I'm all about sort of letting the children experience what they want, you know, and in, right. in, in however way they can. I think it helps them. You know? uh, do you plan on having children yourself anytime soon? <sighs> Probably, you know, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I've halfway raised my little sister just because I'm, you know, always there. I named her. I cut her umbilical cord. Did I was there did? when she was born. What age were you? I was 13. Okay. Yeah, I guess. That, so, yeah, it was... Oh. It was oh. intense. It was yeah, really it's because I, I cut my son's umbilical cord. Really? Yeah, I nearly fainted. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I had mean, no idea. The texture of it when you're yeah, cutting. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, like, it's not something then, you really should cut. You're responsible if they have an innie or an outie. And I, my little sister has both. And she blames it on me. Wait, 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 how can you have both? <laughs> I mean, it's really cute, and I know she's going to watch this, so it's super cute. She's going to watch this? <laughs> this is worse than Lord of the Rings. It's true. She's going to be like two eyes. Yeah. Oh. Um, but it's like, you know, it's like in, then it has a little bit of something inside. Oh, well, everybody has that. Yeah. That's the, that's the, they call that the false out. <laughs> really? Is that the technical term? That's right. That's what they call it in my medical degree. <laughs> no, I see you have a false out there. You know, is that an American term? Because I know you've recently been naturalized. I, I am now an American, yeah. yeah how I, does it feel? I mean, you know, it's fantastic. I, I've noticed a great more, uh, a lot more freedom of uh, speech. And, uh, <laughs> and jury duty can only be days away. So... <laughs> yeah. Have you ever done that, jury duty? I've had so many 
envelope sent to me and I've never been there and I feel like I'm probably the most irresponsible Well, when they send you an envelope, if Ed McMahon's on the envelope, that's not jury duty. <laughs> you or maybe it is. Congratulations, yeah. you may already have become a juror. <laughs> Somehow he's up in Lake Tahoe, sort of dueling out Do you jury still jury. live in Lake Tahoe? I do. Good for I you. Do. You haven't moved here and gotten yourself pierced and tattooed and walking around clubs <laughs> with no underpants on? <laughs> I'm going to save that for my 30s. That yeah, yeah. Sort of oh, nice, yeah, nice yeah, yeah. transition. You know? you know, I have to say, by the time you get to, you know, as you get a bit older, and I speak from some experience here, that's the time you want to start putting your underpants on. <laughs> really? And, and what sort of experience are you speaking about? Well, <laughs> let's just say I had a very big 80s. I don't even want to know. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but it... But in some way, it's suggestive, and I'm kind of enjoying that in a creepy older man way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it works out. It's always a delight to see you. Yes. You look. You don't have to make another film until you come back. You can come back anytime you like. Okay. Right. I so, mean, I could just sort of hang out in the back. Like, sure, you could. I mean, it's a very nice view. We could put down a little fold-down bed for you. <laughs> Up, I really like to try to be handy, you know. So yeah, I I need a couple of things. <laughs> all right, all right. Damn alone.